Howdy. Welcome to Texas Front Porch. I'm your host, Tex. Y'all saddle up with me and my co-host. We're about to sink a spur and go on a ride that takes us down some rocky and windy trails. We're going to do our level best to cipher out everything we can about all sorts of critters. Bigfoot, Dogman, and pretty much anything that walks, creeps, crawls, or even takes to flight. Rabbit holes we're fixing to be poking our heads down is going to take a look-see into everything from abduction to xenophobe. We may not always agree, and that's all right. That, my friends, is how we learn. We will be conversating with a whole lot of interesting folks here on the old porch, and y'all are welcome to chime in. Just keep a civil tongue, and it will go as smooth as a fine whiskey. Y'all can find us over yonder on the Facebook, TikTok, Reddit, Rumble, or you can email us at paracryptidencounters at gmail.com. Or if you're feeling real neighborly, shoot us a text, 972-559-0988. Enjoy the show, folks. Good Monday evening, everybody. Man, we got a good show for you tonight. Randy, you have had an eventful couple of weeks. I have. I have. You know, um, we put out a special. Well, yeah, yeah. We put out our special show last night only Mm -hmm. because we finally got the word and the go ahead that we could actually tell the story. Um, But yeah, I had an up and close Bigfoot encounter. And, uh, you know, the the amazing part is, is we had uh, investigators, trackers, journalists, uh, all kinds of things happening. And it was all caught like. It, you couldn't have done it any better. You right. couldn't have done it any better. Mm-mm. You know, it, it's you're, you're sporting a single braid tonight. I am. I am. I am. Uh, my hair was doing something on its own. <laughs> <laughs> and one side was not cooperating. So I had to move it, you know, all to one side and go, okay. <laughs> like Just so it. it'll I stay like still. It. Well, you know, I, I know your hair gets a little, a little run literally because you got to tie a weight on it so it won't slap you in the face every once in a while. So I get it. <laughs> I do. I do. That's why I wear two braids most of the time because they're a little lighter. So when you get hit, it's not so bad. <laughs> when you have one braid like this, it's a little heavy. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, I, I really want to hear about your encounter. You know, I mean, I, I know. Y'all did the whole show last night, and it, it, it's I, I I love the fact that y'all been teasing the fact that your opinion had changed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and it, it's hard, but with the encounter that you had when you were out with me, and then this encounter, uh-huh. you know, it kind of. Um, it, it kind of makes you, to me, it, it kind of, you, you don't question your sanity so much when you have an encounter that backs up an encounter. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, because we were going back and forth on that. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, could it have been paranormal, the one that we, we were seeing? Right. But I was so sure when I first saw it, you know, I was so yeah. sure because I've, I, I am paranormal. I've seen right. these things. I've seen shadow people, but this thing was so close and, and just, right. you know, it screamed Bigfoot, you know, it screamed it at you. And now that I've had this latest encounter a couple of weeks ago, it just, it just hit everything home. Yeah. You know, and I really after the after the encounter, I didn't have time to think because it went from, uh, you know, I woke up and everybody's a buzz with everything. And then, you know, I'm like, I've seen it. You know, I, I was getting interviewed. They were following tracks. They were doing all this stuff within the camp, which was so cool yep. within the camp. And everything and all the testimonies and, and, and timelines, everything matches. It's just like you, you couldn't have documented that any better. You couldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no doubt about that. You know, and, and we were, 
I kind of had a busy weekend too. Um, I was yes, invited did. or we were invited to be part of the Urban X Con, which was different because it wasn't a Bigfoot thing. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. I educated some people on the cryptic side of stuff. And <laughs> it was kind of cool because they weren't in that loop, you know, and to present the evidence to them and you know they they go from they go from looking at you like this to going you know yeah. like what <laughs> you know they yeah. don't expect when you have hard evidence that you that you put forward to people about these physical creatures that we're dealing with right you know and, and it, we're still we're still on the same page about there's something else going on oh yeah but there are physical creatures out there and when, yes. you, and when you throw this evidence in front of people, that's not necessarily, it's not, that's really never even, you, you have to explain what a cryptid is. You know, they know what Bigfoot is. They know what a werewolf is. But when you start going dogman in the mix and, you know, all this other kind of stuff, and, and you have to, and then you throw the word cryptid in there. They're like, what's a cryptid? And then you have to explain what a cryptid is. And they're like, well, this stuff, that, you know, this is, you know, Harry and Henderson. No, 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 no. Look at this, and then because you, you know you get the house, and you got I got you know I got the handprints, we got the pictures of the footprints, and just you know all kinds of stuff, and plus the stories. And then on the back side of that, right or right alongside that, I've got you and and Krista talking about your encounters, and I'm like, see, right? this is happening out there, folks. This is people are actually running into these things, and this is real, whether you want to admit it or not, it's real. Absolutely. And when, when when you're talking to a group of people that that not only don't know about this stuff, but don't believe in it, and then you see them, you watch them turn that corner as you're talking to them, and and they get that holy crap moment going. You know, <laughs> there's something out here other right. than us. That was awesome. Right. That was freaking awesome. But let's get to the show tonight, man. I met this young woman at the Dogman conference. I said over here, she was, she was the bouncer. She was over there working the door, and um, I think it was either you or Krista came up and says, "Hey, you need to go talk to Monica." It was me. <laughs> um, and so I went over and I'm like, introduce myself, and she's I, I, from the look in her face. She's I, the whole, you know, it's like, oh god, who's this? You know, <laughs> you know it's just creepy old man coming up to talk to me for you know, and we ended up sitting there talking for hours, and it was such a fascinating conversation. She's such a, a great person, but don't tell her I said that because it go to her head, you know. But you know, it, it's, and I didn't know who she was. Honestly, I did not even know. I didn't realize who I didn't realize who she was because I didn't mm -hmm. know her last name. I just knew Monica, right? Right. And folks, she looks a lot different. In, in, okay, in the photo, of, <laughs> in the photo that that's that I used for the show, I threw her hat on me, uh, threw her hat on her. My can't talk. I threw my hat on her, and and we took a picture of it. And but she looks so much different in that picture. Than she did in the TV shows. Yeah. And you talk about aging like a fine wine. This woman has it down to a science. I'm telling you, but let's get her up here and let's talk to Monica because she's got some, she's got some great stuff. <laughs> there she All is. Right, that, that's about as much kissing up as I'm going to do for you. That, Monica. Was, that was a great intro. I liked that. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing he just didn't say was we have a bouncer for hire. You know, he didn't yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, it was great. But you, you were, you were not, let, let's get this out of the way real quick. You're no stranger to the camera. Okay. <laughs> um, you you, you want to give everybody who, tell us who you are. I mean, and, and where they have probably seen you at. 
they have probably seen me on Monster Quest, but I was, I mean, I really haven't been on TV that much. I mean, it's not like I'm on there regularly, uh, but I was on Monster Quest um, in the first season. I was with the all-female expedition up in Washington State, and it was me and Kathy Strain and Melissa Hovey and a couple of other women, and we were up there. Um, we were up there for, oh gosh, like nine days filming. They, the, the amount of film that ended up on the cutting room floor must have been staggering because they filmed us the entire time we were up there. Uh, and they, you know, for them to compress it down to 10 minutes worth of airtime um, is interesting. But yes, I've been on there. I've been on Weird Travels on the Travel Channel uh with a group that i was with at the time and uh, out in east texas investigating bigfoot i've been doing that for a little over 20 years now uh, but aside from bigfoot i mean my interests are all over the place and as with most things you know you go looking for one thing and you end up finding a whole slew of other things and you have all kinds of encounters and experiences along the way so that's i'm sure that's what we'll be talking about tonight yeah, we definitely want to get into your weird encounters. And I mean, <laughs> it, it's not necessarily the one, you know, where you met me, but the, the other strange <laughs> encounters that you've had. Yeah, all but, the attempted kidnappings and the, the weird little <laughs> shapes and the goblins. Are we going to talk about that tonight? <laughs> well, when we were at the because conference, I you said, oh, we got to talk but, about that. <laughs> Because I, I wasn't going to bring that up, but now that you mentioned it, that's just I mean, a, that's more of a just beware the people you're with kind of a cautionary tale. Well, but you know what that that's a that is a good topic though. I mean, honestly, because a lot of people, a lot of people do go out on these expeditions with people they've never met, they may have talked to, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff, but. That is a, a legitimately concern. It is, you know? and yeah, Espe I mean, it's honestly, you know, it's especially for women. I mean, let's face it, you know, yeah, because I don't see anybody kidnapping me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just don't. No, no, um, don't sell yourself short. I'm sure somebody will try to shove you in the van, the taco van. Just. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a big door. <laughs> They'd have me at the taco sign. I'm like, what tacos? You got tacos? Free tacos. And, 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 see, that's the problem. If, and they're going to have to shove me into anything. <laughs> Probably going to shove them out of the way trying to get into me. So there's Because <laughs> me and tacos are like that, I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh, who doesn't like tacos? I mean, come on now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So let's, where do you want to start? I mean, what, what you've been, cause you've been doing this for like two decades, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And a little over 20 years. We can start anywhere. I mean, we could start at the beginning. Uh, well, how, how did like, you, how did you get started? I mean, okay. Cause I know you're a paranormal investigator also. And I'm just going to go out on a limb here. Did you get into the paranormal before you got into the Bigfoot? Uh, no, actually. Well, really, it, it all kind of intertwines now. I've never, I shouldn't say never. Uh, I was formally investigating Bigfoot first. Now, paranormal and Bigfoot and every other cryptid imaginable has been <laughs> a part of my life. You. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Poncho yeah. says she started when she was nine. Oh, that is so sweet. I sure did. <laughs> I sure did. I did. You know, I sure did. I was very mature for nine. I was a very mature nine year old. <laughs> so, anyway, anyway. Well, I mean, I was actually going to say, you know, the, you know, Bigfoot and paranormal and every cryptid imaginable has been a part of my life since I was a child. So, oh. um, it's been there the whole time. I mean, I've always had a fascination with ghosts and anything strange and unusual. And um, when I was 
oh goodness, in my late 20s, and I was living in East Texas. This is what got me formally investigating Bigfoot was um, I was home one night watching The Legend of Boggy Creek, and I realized, oh, hey, now, that's not too far from where I live currently. I wonder if people actually investigate that. Let's go look on the internet. So I did that <laughs> back in uh, 2002, I think. It was January, February 2002. And um, I looked up, uh, I think I looked up Texas and Bigfoot investigations and a bunch of groups popped up and I applied to a couple of them and the TBRC hit me up first. So that's who I joined. And that's what I was with for about 10 years. And um, lo and behold, that's what brought me into the Bigfoot world. But along the way, you know, I never lost my love of just paranormal ghosts because, I mean, I've seen apparitions. I've seen full body apparitions. I've had things touch me. I live currently in a haunted house. I've lived in haunted houses before. I mean, it's just followed me my whole life. It's been there the whole time. Well, and that was going to be my question. Do you, have you lived in haunted houses or do you have something that's attached to you? Mm, I think it's both. I think mm. that I do have something that follows me. I think it's, um, I think it's attached to the family. I think it's attached through my mom's side of the family is what I've been told. Um, I've had more than one person tell me that it was something that was through my mom's side that was oh. attached. Yeah. And my mom, um, my mom's always been, you know, into the paranormal as well. And she would tell me, you know, there's something different about us and there's something different about you that things are attracted to. And I always was just like, sure, mom. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, you know, looking back, you know, there are a lot of odd things that have happened to me. And I do have a lot of strange encounters with just weird things, you know, and I've seen strange things that other people maybe haven't seen. And I probably had more, you know, paranormal encounters than the average person. So maybe there is something to what my mom was saying. Yeah. You know, and she told me a story <laughs> about when I was a baby and, you know, my mom's a little, you know, she's a little fun to talk to. So. <laughs> um, she, she, I mean, throughout my whole life, she would tell me this story. It scared the the jeebus out of me when I was, you know, small, of course, she had no filter. So she would tell me this story um, when she would be home alone and I was just maybe six months old, four, four to six months old. I was less than a year old. And my father worked the graveyard shift. So she was home alone at night, you know, and they lived kind of on the outskirts of town at the time. And um, she would always hear weird noises around. And my dad would always just chalk it up to there being, you know, people kind of poking around, like prowlers poking around. But one night she said she was sitting um, in her bed reading and my bedroom was directly across the hall from her and she said she felt something watching her and she looked over into the hallway and she saw this she called it a demon but she um she said it, you know the way she described it sound like a demon it was this tall red figure with horns and yeah you know, well it yeah Standing yeah, there, staring saying. at her, kind of smiling at her, but standing in the doorway to my bedroom, which was dark because I was asleep in my crib. And then it turns around and just walks into my bedroom and disappears. And she was so terrified that, you know, she couldn't walk. She crawled into my room, grabbed me out of the crib, and then crawled into the living room. And she was so scared. Um, she had the deadbolt locked and she couldn't unlock the door for my dad. It took her forever to, you know, be able to, like, get to the door and unlock it and hmm. my dad was mad and he thought that somebody was just trying to break in the house and freaked her out but she always stuck to that story and then there was this tv show on netflix recently within the last hmm. few years and she um she was living with me for a little while and she was watching the show and I, gosh i forget what it's called but it's about these aliens that come down and they they help mankind and they kind of disguise themselves, but when they reveal what they look like, they look like demons. 
And mm -hmm. when they revealed themselves, she flipped out. She said, Monica, that's what I saw. That is exactly what I saw. It looked just like that, except it didn't have these wings. And it wasn't, you know, 12 feet tall, but it looked just like this thing. You know, red skin, big horns, like pointy features. She goes, that's what I saw. So, I mean, I don't, I still, you know, I, I didn't see it. I didn't experience it, even though I was asleep in the crib. But that's that just kicked it off, I think. I don't know what mm, happened. Yeah, well, you know, it is amazing that throughout the years, it's the, the stories remain the same. Yeah. You know, it, that, that's what's cool about it. Yeah, she hasn't changed it, which, you know, I mean, it gives it some credibility for sure, because she's never changed it. I mean, she definitely mm -hmm. saw something that scared her to death. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, know my, my mother, my dad was pretty much no nonsense, you know, and I think we see that a lot. You know, the, the mother, your, your mothers are, are, for some reason, they're more, <clears throat> they're more open to this kind of stuff. It's, I don't know what's in, but the, the, the men, it's like, they're afraid to talk about this kind of stuff. It, it, even if they believe in it, you know, it, it's like they, they want, they want to be the, uh, the, the, the analytical side, I guess, you know, the, uh -huh. You know, keep things black and white type thing, and you know, um, stay grounded. That that seems to be the the pattern that we see in in, in most families. That you know, especially people that talk about this. And, oh, it, it almost always it's it's. Well, you know, my mother used to talk about this stuff, but my dad he was not. <laughs> you know, and it was the same way with me. You know. I can remember my mom being interested in that kind of stuff, but she grew up in Texarkana. She grew up with all these stories, you know? So, I mean, she knew about the Bod Creek monster before, you know, the movie and stuff came out, but it's, it's very, very interesting to see that dynamic, not only with, you know, like your own family, but when we start talking to people like yourself, we see that, like I said, that pattern develop. And <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure why, it's, you know. So, but, okay, so these, I don't know what else to call that thing. If it, I mean, red and horns and, you know, yeah. and Michael Grin. I mean, I, I hit that on the <laughs> nose. It's it's saying demon to me, is what yeah. it's saying. That's what it sounds like to me too. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know why it would have been there. I mean, that's a little curious to me. Like why it just right popped up in my bedroom door. <laughs> it smiled at my mom and walked on in. You know, like it owned the place. They didn't live there very long after that. I think my mom like finally just threw a fit. And if my if my dad was of the belief that people were trying to break in, my mom was like, okay, enough's enough. Like I'm here alone at night. We're right. moving. <laughs> well, you know, they, they, they say that uh demons do have the ability to change and appear to you. Um the best way to get in. Now this this particular I'm not saying demon, let's just call it a negative entity. We'll just call mm -hmm. it that. This negative entity probably just appeared to her in that way to scare her. Yeah. You know, and say, hey, you know, yeah. I, if I scare her, I know her. I can do what I, I want to do if I scare her. Yeah, a manipulation. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, you know, cause they, they, they say that too, that, you know, when you see children, uh, you know, that you better watch out. Because that, you know, that also negative entities will appear as children or elderly people or something that will seem nice and, you know, that you wouldn't be scared of. But in your mom's case, maybe it's like, well, if, if I, I better scare her because I'll get what I want. If I scare her, she'll stay out of the way. Right. Yeah, so that's you know, they appear, you know, they, they, they'll appear to look just about anything, you know, like you said, yeah. kids and. 
and yeah. stuff and Bigfoot and loved ones. Oh. They'll appear as your loved one yeah. if, if if they if yeah they, just yeah, yeah they can. I mean, the energy coming off of them though. I mean, I just feel like if it's a negative energy, if you're tuned into that, you feel yeah. it no matter what they come at you as. Yep, I, you know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Because so, there are times like if you hear children's voices or you see a kid, and I'm like, nope. <laughs> no. Mm. I'm done. <laughs> um, so when when did you start going okay um and, and and really looking into this kind of stuff? The paranormal or yeah. Yeah. Um well really my whole life I've been interested in it. I started I started a group or I tried to anyway. Um Oh gosh, probably like 2009 in the Dallas area. And I was just so busy with work and, you know, life. And I was right. fully, full on into the Bigfoot thing. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't dedicate a lot of time to it. So I just had to let go of that. Um, but I mean, I've always, you know, I hate to use the word dabbled, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've always had one foot in it. Right uh -huh. and, and done what I could where I could and but like I said you know no matter where I go it I shouldn't say something happens to me no matter where I am because that's just not true but I have a lot of experiences from different places you know and I just I feel like yeah you can feel the energy in places I feel like I can feel the energy in places pretty easily like I'm in tune with people and places pretty easily. Um, so no matter where I go, I mean, I'm always interested in the history of it. I love to, you know, if it's old or if, especially abandoned houses, like, man, I want to go in there. Let's take a look at what, what's the history going on in that place. <laughs> Looks You're right. Let's go check it out. <laughs> You're right. That's what I want to do. I mean, even the nice normal places, you know, can be, scary as heck i mean and it's fascinating to me that you can have a you know a beautiful home that by all accounts appears normal on the outside but it is a world of horror and you're trapped in it at night when you're trying to rest i mean it's a place you stay in to rest and if it's just full of negative energy which a lot of them not a lot of them but some of them are you know right. yeah it's interesting to me that you know this the seemingly just mundane everyday normal house that nobody would think twice of is just terrifying on the inside if you're yeah. living there well yeah. you know and i, I had <laughs> we bought a brand new house back in 05 and we had stuff happening a lot of weird stuff happened and we were like it's brand new house you know we're the first Not owners matter. And we're like, what's going on? My wife didn't even really believe in ghosts until that house, um, because there was no denying it. I mean, honestly. But you know, we come to find out, you know, her and one of the neighbors started doing research on the land, and it was the land. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, because there had been a massacre there. Oh back my in, goodness. Um, yeah, there, there, there was a. Uh, it was on the Chisholm Trail, mm. and there was a a a cattle drive going through and it was some cowboys and some, you know, kids that were breaking onto the trail and everything. And a war party came through and just wiped them out, you know, and that's what we were seeing and hearing was there was a, a, a grown man and he felt he was more, the, the, the feeling you got from him, he was more of a protective thing. Um, because I, I saw him full body. And then the the young boy, which I ain't figured out how this happened yet, but I actually touched him. And oh yeah, that's a whole uh, yeah. That's I, I'll tell you that because everybody's heard it. But um, I I thought it was my daughter, but anyway, um, it's it's like you said, it's weird. You can walk into just like you would think a mundane house, you know, just a regular house and it's chock full of stuff, you know? Mm. So when, when did you start getting into the cryptid side of things? 
So um, when I was young, my uh, grandfather actually on my father's side would encourage me with the Bigfoot and um, huh. all the cryptid things. Yeah. Because uh, he grew up in uh, Western Oklahoma and then moved out to oh. California when he was a teenager. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Yeah. Okay. So he, you know, we moved up to, or he moved out to Northern California with his family. And uh, that's where I was born and raised. And we would spend our summers up in Oregon. And he would always tell us stories about Bigfoot. And he was fascinated by that. He, I think he really believed it you know, Bigfoot was a, was a thing. And he was always telling us stories and encouraging us with, you know, my brother and I, you know, cause we, we love, we ate that up. And I remember being a little girl writing, you know, little stories about, you know, Scooby-Doo and, you know, <laughs> type stories about, you know, going to the Loch Ness, you know, and looking for the Loch Ness monster. And then the next thing I'm like in South America looking for Bigfoot. I mean, I was all over the map <laughs> in my little stories, but my grandfather was very encouraging of that. And spending the summers um, where I did in, in Oregon, at the time, I think it's, you know, a little more populated now than it was back then, but we were, um, we were in the mountains uh, west of Roseburg, um, kind of between the ocean and I-5. So we were in the mountains there, and where we were was... Yeah, fairly remote. I mean, there were houses and farms. There was, a, there was a dairy farm next door to my cousins and my grandparents bought some land across a creek. And my grandfather and my uncle built this steel bridge that crossed the creek. And my cousins and I, um, they ran track and I ran track and we'd run every kind of evening. Like we knew down to the bridge on the main road, it was a two lane asphalt road, which was like, we called it the highway. Like, Maybe a car every 30 minutes would go down. <laughs> yeah. And we knew it was a mile there and a mile back. So, you know, we knew we were running two miles. And um, we just had a lot of encounters. And, and my cousins were always quick to chalk it up to bear. They were always very rational and, and didn't really believe in any of that. My uncle never really believed in any of that. But looking back on the things that happened to me anyway, um, and doing the research that I've done, I, I think that, you know, there were encounters with something, you know, we definitely had some encounters with something. I remember playing on a, we were at a friend of theirs and this is when we were pretty young and I can't even remember the age, but we were playing on a wood pile, literally on the back 40 of their property. And we were at the edge of a wood line and it was pretty thick woods. It was really thick woods actually. And there were some, uh, younger trees and, you know, of course, larger trees. And we were all playing slide down the wood pile because we're stupid kids and didn't, weren't afraid of splinters. So <laughs> we were playing and I happened to be on the top of the wood pile and we could hear something. I remember hearing it walking towards us in the woods. Like you could hear that. I mean, you could hear it coming and then I'm standing on the top of the wood pile and something starts just growling and, and shaking the trees just like it grabbed a hold of the trees and were you know shaking the smaller trees and i wasn't about to turn around i was terrified <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh all the kids all of them took off running back to the farmhouse and they were like bear bear you know they're running and i'm freaked out i slide down the wood pile i hurt my foot on the way down of course and you know i'm you know, limping through the field, thinking this thing's chasing me. It's going to take me down before I can get to the first, first barbed wire fence I've got to crawl through to get, you know, back to the house. And, you know, I was afraid to look behind me. And of course, you know, there was nothing there. But, you know, looking back on it, you know, I guess it could have been a bear, but I don't know any bears that shake trees like that, you know. Right. And uh, there was another instance where my cousin and I were, um, we were running and the sun had almost gone down behind the ridge line, the mountain. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's still pretty light. Um, and I was winded. I had to stop and I couldn't really run anymore. I was starting to feel sick. And she was way, way more athletic than I was. And she just kept going. 
And um, she stopped and waited for me for a minute. And so we were walking and talking and, you know, to my right, there had been um, a rock slide. So there was, um, there was no guardrail. It was just rocks like slid down and then a creek and then another mountain going up. And then to our left was the, the highway and then uh, a little barbed wire fence and another mountain going up, you know, trees start and it goes up and we're talking and something starts walking with us in the woods and it's pacing us and we'd stop and it would stop and we'd go and it would go and she flips out she thinks it's a bear stalking us so she flips out starts screaming bear 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 and takes off running and leaves me there and i'm like i'm gonna die because i literally <laughs> cannot run anymore <laughs> I'm so, yeah yeah so exactly might have tried to run a little bit but here's the thing it never broke the wood line it kept pace with me when I did run. And then, you know, I had to stop because I was like, you know, the pains in your side. I couldn't breathe. Yep. I thought I was going to pass mm-hmm. yeah. And um, I was like, that happens to me when I, I walk across the yard. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but it never broke the wood line. And if I ran, it ran. If I stopped, it stopped. If I walked, it walked. And it kept with me for a long time. And I remember my uncle whistling for me because he could we were in a valley so he'd go out and you know he'd scream and if he we he we couldn't hear him scream and then he'd whistle really loud and if we could hear him that you know we'd try to whistle back and he'd know that we were okay and he was whistling whistling because i guess my cousin made it back to the house and she was like my cousin's gonna get eaten by a bear you better go find her <laughs> so um that was um that was another story but you know i looking back on it i just you know, I guess it could have been a bear, but I just, I just, I don't know. You know, maybe, I, I don't think it was. I think if it was a bear with her running and me running and stopping, I just think it would have broke through the wood line at some yeah, point. I think and I didn't hear any chuffing. It. Yeah, I didn't I hear think the, it Yeah. I think it would have shown itself um, once you were alone. Right. If it were yeah, a bear, and I didn't it hear the jaw then. pops. Yeah, and I didn't hear the <sighs> that. I mean, yeah. I've right. had bear stalk me up in Washington. I mean, I've had bear walk up on me, and you know, when they're agitated, they pop their jaw. You hear the pop, mm-hmm. or you hear the, the huff. You know, I've had bear walk through camp before in the middle of the night. So, I mean, looking back on it now, I just really don't think it was a bear. Doesn't sound like it. I mean, no. you know, it's, especially, I mean, you, you've had, like you said, you've had bear encounters. This was so, it was a lot different, you know. Yeah, but, definitely. I mean, you can't rule it out, but, you know, it's just odd. Yeah, I didn't see it, <laughs> didn't see it, so can't yeah, rule it out. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's, uh, that, that's the, I, I will say this. That's one of the big advantages of not being in bear country, <laughs> you know. Um, and up until recently, we, you know, we we didn't worry about it. You know, that's one thing we didn't have to worry about. You know, debunking it part part of the debunking was it being a bear, but now we got bears in the area, so now we're gonna add that to it. But um, so as you got older. You, you got more into this stuff, obviously. Yeah, I leaned right into it. And when, <laughs> when did you when did you start actively going out and researching these cryptids? Now, I do want to get into the whole skinwalker thing, and I want to touch on the. Uh, and we'll probably get into this in the second hour, but I, I want to I want to touch on the the legends and stuff that you. I mean, you, you do a lot of studying on on the British Isle legends and mm-hmm. stuff, and I do want to touch on that because, I mean, we we can talk about the stuff that's that's around here. That's fine, but we've really been talking a lot about the Fay here lately. Yeah, it's and, been a hot topic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really has. Um, and like I said, I, we'll, we'll get into that later. But when did you start actively researching? the paranormal and the cryptids. Hmm. That's, um, so actively researching it probably wasn't until I 
joined the TBRC and I was actively researching Bigfoot. And that's when I started, you know, finding like-minded people because that's the big thing. You know, I I can look into this on my own and I can study this on my own. Finding like-minded people, especially before Google, is difficult. (laughs) Yeah. Before the internet was a thing, it wasn't so easy to find your people. You know, you kind of had to, you know, stick your neck out there a little bit and get laughed at a lot. Oh, yeah. Get some side eye. You know, people are like, "Mm, you're one of them, huh? All right. (laughs) Well, you know, and the thing about it is, and I think that's why so many people have these encounters and they say, well, I didn't talk about it for 20 years. You didn't have anybody to talk about. I mean, to talk about it too. You know? Right. I mean, really, the only time I ever talk about my encounter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like you don't, you don't want everybody thinking you're crazy. You know, because that's the first right. thing people thought, you know, whether that or you were lying, one of the two. But the the world is a lot, it, it, the world became a lot smaller when the internet was introduced. I always say the internet was both the best and the worst invention that's ever been made. <laughs> so that is true. Yeah. Yeah. But it's brought some so, cool people into my life. I love it. I mean, I know, that, right? For that purpose, you know, I've, yeah. I've got to do so many cool things. I mean, without the internet, you know, I wouldn't have been on Monster Quest. Wouldn't have been on, you know, a lot of things. I wouldn't have gotten to meet I, all of the cool people that I've met throughout the years and done all the cool things that I've done. And I think that that that's I love that part of it. Right. Right. Like you right. said it has yeah. the world. You know, I've studied I, I, and I've read 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 and I've read, but now I can find other people to talk about, you know, all these things that I've, you know, studied and read about. And it's wonderful. And and that's another thing, you know, I mean, when you talk about reading, the there wasn't much there wasn't much out there about the whole cryptid side of things. You yeah, know, you had to dig. Yeah. Yeah. You really did. You, you. I can remember in school when they had the 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 book fairs. You know, I was always looking for the weird. You know, um, I was too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> those were not easy to find either. It was no, always like scary no, stories weren't. to tell in the dark, or I was looking for. You know, they they had a few like Native American legend books, like a handful in our library out where yeah. I grew up, but there was not that many. No, it was very limited, very limited. Mm-hmm. So when you, when you got, do you remember your first investigation out in the field? Um, I remember if it wasn't my first, it was, it was one of my first. Yeah, I do. It was, um, it was a lady and her son and she lived in a trailer out in Woodville, Texas, out in East Texas. And um, Woodville is a pretty- A lot of reports out there. Mall mm-hmm. town. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's in the big thicket for sure. And it, it was only about 20 minutes from where I lived at the time, 20, 30 minutes from my house. And um, she was claiming that a, a Bigfoot was coming out of the woods and stealing her goats i want to say miniature goats and um it had knocked you know it was pounding on her trailer and um you know of course i get out there to investigate and you know she had this trailer that was you know from the 50s and it had it had seen better days so you know she's showing me where it had pounded on the side of her trailer and i'm like i can't tell you that dent is newer than the other dents (laughs) so um you know, she shows me around, you know, she has her son because she was afraid to go out. So she has her son show me around the pen uh, where this thing uh, was just kind of coming out of the woods and leaning over and just grabbing the goats, I want to say, or hogs. I'm pretty sure it was goats, though. And just walking back out into the woods with it. Um, and uh, what what was interesting to me for that investigation was number one that woman was terrified and she right. would not let me even onto her property unless i was armed um which was unusual for me because i'd bring my k-bar but i didn't always bring a knife 
I mean, I, I didn't always bring a gun. I, I've always brought a knife, mm -hmm. but I didn't always bring a gun. Um, but she would not let me out there without something strapped to my side, um, some sort of firearm. And when I did go to the pen to investigate, um, the tree, there was a large, large tree right um, at the pen where this thing was supposedly like coming out of the woods and grabbing everything. And she said that it was peeing on that tree, which was interesting. Uh -huh. um, and I get out there and it was a very unusual smell. It smelled like a wet horse. And it wasn't hog. It didn't smell like feral hog. It, it was a different smell. It, it, it smelled very similar to just like a wet, sweaty horse smell. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, which was very interesting to me. And then her son and I ventured out, you know, further into the woods and there was a dried up Creek bed and I found a track there that was not a Bigfoot track. And it was, um, it was an alligator track of all things, but it was no. so far away from any body of water. I was thinking, what in the heck? is a, yeah. a gator track <laughs> way, the, way up in here and it you know it was old and dried up but still it was it was clearly a gator track and uh I, that was the most interesting print i found out of there and then um i was investigating um that night a few nights after that um i had an assistant and he and i were out there um in an oil <sighs> I don't know what to call it, like um, like a pump yard for, it had one of the oil pumps. Oh yeah, and pump we were jet. out there. Yes, we were we were out uh, by one of those because it was pretty clear, and it was easier um, for us to to get in and out of. And there was something up in a tree watching us. We could see the eye shine, and it was it was pretty large eye shine. Um, and if we'd get out there and, and move towards it, it would um it would get out of the tree and move away i just remembered mm. that i remember that i shine um but i mean that's all that came of that investigation she she didn't keep in contact with me and report anything you know recent because she had gotten rid of her goats she'd either gotten rid of them or this thing had taken all of them so it you know the food source supposedly had dwindled right. dried up so no reason for it to be coming around anymore um but i remember that investigation because i was taking measurements i was taking field notes i was like doing my little <laughs> due diligence there i wrote like a 10 page field report <laughs> <laughs> so as far as being out in the field what's the most specific encounter that you've had as far as specific? cryptids go. Mm. Well, um, maybe specific is the wrong word. Um, memorable. Memorable. Hmm. Well, see, that's, um, that's a tough one because cryptid-wise, while in the field, I've never really encountered anything that I couldn't really replicate gotcha. as far as like, you know, Bigfoot goes there. I, I didn't ha hear anything or see anything. Never really saw and Like I've never had a, a Bigfoot encounter, even though I've been out there for ages, eons now looking for sounds like somebody needs to go to Brown Springs. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. I need we'll to take there. you. Need no to... problem. <laughs> It's not, but it's only like 45 minutes from me now. <laughs> and, um, but um, I, while, while out, I have seen other things. So I was, I was coming back from a, a, a night investigation with a group of women. And I was in the back seat of, um, somebody's truck we were coming back to camp and this was in east texas and we were in this um campground 
that I like to go to that was not far outside of Woodville, not far from where I used to live. And uh -huh. it's a tiny little campground. Um, it's Corps Engineers. Not a lot of people know about it. It's set up really cool. It's got um, a little remote area that you can reserve, like five spots. Uh, it's surrounded on three sides by water and only one road in and out. And oh it's, yeah, it's real nice. It's real nice. And I've had what I'm about to tell you happen there. I had a phantom car roll up on me there and I had a witness for that one. I had somebody in the car with me and she saw it too. And um, it's just, it's oh. a, yeah, I had something stalk me in the tree line there. Like the whole, you know, you walk, it walks, you stop, it stops kind of thing. All right. Well, you know what, though? Uh, we have to go to break here in just about 40 seconds or so. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to stop you right there. We're going to leave a cliffhanger. <laughs> for yeah, because I want to hear about this. I want to hear about this phantom car. So that's what we're going to I did too. About. She said that. I was like, what? I perked oh, right yeah. up. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, as as you I know, all I can think of was Christine at that moment, like, oh, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what it looked like, too. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we're going to hear more about this. Folks, we'll be back in five minutes. Y'all do not leave, but do, you can go get a drink, take a pee, whatever you want to do, smoke a cigarette. <laughs> I don't care. But just make sure you come back because we're going to get into a lot, of, a lot of interesting stuff that Monica's ran into. We'll be back in a little bit. Four minutes to go, folks. Four minutes. Three minutes, we're almost there. Two minute warning guys, two minute warning.
One minute. One minute. And we are back. Um, we got to take care of a, a few things real quick. One, um, I was asked if we have a date for the fish fry, the get together in Brown Springs. And we are going to, I got to, I, I need to verify this with as many people on the team as I can, but we're looking at November 3rd, 4th, and 5th. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, we're not going to have fish fry every day. We'll probably have the fish fry on Saturday. Um, but I'm going to stay out there for that length of time. And so that will give more people a chance to at least come by, spend some time. If they can't spend the whole weekend, you know, they can drop in for the day or whatever. So um, that's the tentative date. And folks, I got to tell you, if... <laughs> I will pay a very close attention to the weather. And if there's a good chance that we're going to get rained out, we'll, we'll postpone it. Okay. Um, there is no, you ain't got my no tickets to this thing or nothing. You ain't got to bring nothing but you and your camping gear. Just come on out. And we are going to have it at Brown Springs. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, uh, if, if you want to go, send me an email and let me know. That way I can give the directions to whatever site we're going to be at to you. And we'll, we'll do it that way. Um, <laughs> the pops is asking, how much fish do I need to bring? But you know what? We'll probably, get, well, I don't know. It depends how many people we have sign up. Um, but... And that's what we're looking at. Another thing is I forgot. Um, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I did. I forgot. There was Nothing something else. I, I forgot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, um, we are going to have our first members only live chat or show next week. I will. It will be on a, uh, right now I'm looking at Wednesday because there's really nothing, um, we can do it, we can work, I don't know, Tuesday or Wednesday because we there's, there's shows every, every day of the week, so we got to work around all those shows, but we'll figure it out, but it's going to be members only, so if you want to be involved in what we're going to do is we're you're going to be able to, you know, not only chat and chat, but if you want to come up and talk to us one-on-one -on -one or whatever, we'll be dropping the link in chat and you can just follow, follow it up. And we're also going to be doing a giveaway. So, um, and all kinds of giveaway equipment and, and, you know, porch gear and, and other stuff. And, but, um, you don't want to miss that. So if you want to be a part of that, it's like three bucks. So y'all become a member, you know, I'm, I think we got like nine so far. Um, so it, it'll be a very intimate audience and mm -hmm. I think it'll be kind of cool. We can actually spend some one on one on one time and ask questions, you know, answer questions or, or, you know, if you want to ask about encounters we've had, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But um yeah, that's what we're planning on doing next week. 
And like I said, November 3rd, 4th, and 5th is when we're looking at having the camp out, greet, meet and greet, fish fry, whatever. Whatever you want to call it. There are going to be fish to eat, and we're going to be there. So yeah. I don't know how many members of, the, members of the team are going to end up being there. Um, I know me and Jason will definitely be there. Pops will be there. Um, I think Crystal CJ is going to be there. Uh, CD Squatcher is talking about being there. She can get off and get back the trip. A lot of people. So um, but I know Brandy's going to come down if she can. So, right. yeah. Well, if, if we stick to those dates, if those dates are good, I think I'm free. So Awesome. Yep. Because I don't go to Ohio until the 18th. So I think nice. we're good. Nice. Well, let's get her back up here because I want to hear about this phantom car. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. well, yeah. Uh, you're you're not very far from it, so we we expect you to be there. <laughs> be there, waiting for some pictures, listening to some stories. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, the and, and, and all the other words, yeah. <laughs> Be, being well and what's and, and i and i'm i'm gonna give everybody tours and stuff like that and if we want to go up and investigate stuff we can you know i'm sure there will be several trips made to the cemetery day and night i'm sure you know because it's a fascinating cemetery even during the day what are we talking why are y'all laughing at me i you know what, what i was thinking i was just like well you better bring like the windex and and paper towels to clean the window <laughs> <laughs> Because whenever Brandy she drives me around there, I've got my face <laughs> stuck in the window, you know. <laughs> it's a very interesting place just to drive around. It really <laughs> is. And but um, and if y'all want to fish, I'm going to tell you right now, make sure you got your Oklahoma fishing license. You can get one for a day or three days, you know, but um, you can go down to the river and fish. Hell, you can swim or noodle if you want to. I don't care. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna. You know what? If nothing else is gonna be fun. If none of y'all show up, hey, I'm going by myself. So, you know, y'all can't gripe at me for going by myself because y'all didn't show up. That's right. Um, and and Pop sent me a, a, a location that he he thinks is gonna work out. Will hold a lot of people. Um, I haven't looked at it yet, but yes, pops, I did get it. Thank you. Um, I gotta get better about responding to text. I, I, man, I get so wrapped up and I get so many that I, I really gotta get a handle on that. But cause it drives me crazy when I text somebody and I don't get a text for like two or three days. And then I turn around <laughs> and do it to somebody else. I'm like, you know, I got, I gotta get, I gotta get a handle on this. That'll be better. <laughs> That'll be better. But I've already got stuff for the first. I've already got stuff for the first giveaway that we're going to do next week on the uh, members only thing. So I got a hat, and, um, keychain, a couple of stickers. So that's going to be a package deal. Um, Sounds like a good time. People better show up for that. Yeah, um, I, I know we got. Well, I'm thinking we got nine people now. So uh, Donnie Joe says I want to go, but I don't know anything about camping. Ain't much to it. Crawl in the tent and go to sleep. Uh, that's camping. I'm having. I'm finding out that I'm having better luck sleeping in my car. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you do. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> so, I mean, there's always that. You well, know, I've she, got. Brandy had her, you know, her 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 first up close and personal Bigfoot encounter uh, a couple yep. weeks ago. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. In yeah. Missouri. Yeah. I, yeah, and I was sleeping in my car. Yeah. And you watched that. So, I mean, you, you you had eyes on that thing for how long? About 45 seconds. Wow, well, that's a long time. Yeah. Well, I, so, I think, well, it was standing behind a tent. And the way it, it did is it came behind and kind of outlined the backside of the camp. It came out of the wood line. And it was running right, you know, in back of the tents. So when I had woke up, 
<clears throat> I turned one way and I'm looking because I, I hear all this, you know, I heard tapping on my car. I didn't think anything about it. And then I heard walking. So we as girls, we don't let a girl pee alone in the woods. You know, we've always, somebody's always got to have to have eyes, you know. So uh, um, I thought it was one of the ladies from the tent that got up. See, they had cots. I had a mattress. It had stormed. So I slept in my car. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was one of the ladies, but it wasn't. And I just kind of scanned, you know, right in front of my car and looked over. And it was standing right there behind another tent that was right next to my car. It was, uh, we measured it. And to be exact, it was 19 feet, four inches away from my car. Oh, that's so I'm really glad you said, I'm really glad you didn't say 19 feet, four inches tall. That was. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. But you know, when, when, when I was describing it at first, because I was saying, Hey, it was, it was about six, five and, and what, my brother six five, so you know, right there, I'm looking at it. I, I'm like, well, I know that height. That was pretty easy. So when we measured it on the tent, and and then they measured it up to where I saw the top of the head, yeah, it was about six five to six seven. Yeah. So I'm like, huh? Oh, well, there you go. And uh, you know, I saw it, and I'm like, crap. You know, what am I gonna do? I have no phone service. I don't want to pick up my phone. It's going to see the light. I can't turn on my car to roll down the window to say anything to anybody. I'm not jumping out and yelling surprise. So I, you know, it was very, very cold out there. So I had just eased, eased myself back in the seat and, and laid myself down and covered my face like I normally do when I'm cold, just the way I was. And I listened to it walk around there for a few more minutes and then walk off. And uh, it, it, it had spent some time out there and you could see the push trail from where it started in the camp, around the camp. Uh, you, you could see the, the indentions of where, where each foot uh, fall went in the tall grass that they were measuring to be between 13 and 14 inches. Um, I mean, I, I, I couldn't have been in a better place at a better time with better people. You know, because okay. I'm out there with investigators, trackers, journalists, camera crews. We're all out there. And it just it just happened at the right place, right time. Yeah. Yeah. In the, the story, if if anybody is interested or, or um, is subscribed already, it's the, the story is coming out. I think he's mailing it out on the 8th, but it's in the Bigfoot Times from Daniel Perez out of California. So that story mm -hmm. is there. And. I'm going to give out a disclaimer. The picture he took of me is that morning. And boy, do I look pretty. <laughs> just saying, I'm pictures. looking real nice. But you got to remember, I've been out in the woods, but I'm just looking pretty. <laughs> so, oh, there you go. Lord. You didn't have your whole Laura Croft thing going? Uh, no, it was, it was too cold for that. <laughs> I had on uh, I had on uh, my woolly leggings, and then I had pants on top of that, plus another long sleeve shirt. I had on a sweat shirt, and then I had on my Carhartt. So that's the way I was standing in it because it was it got down pretty cold, and it had stormed, like I said. So that made it even worse, you know. And the dew was real heavy, so it the, the moisture in the air was yeah, it was cold. Yeah, that makes <laughs> it even cold. cold. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah, it looked real pretty. So what you're telling me is the one time that you should have had your face plastered to the window, you didn't. You know, <laughs> when I saw it, and I, you know, like you're processing all the things that it could be until you get to the things that you wouldn't think it was. Um, I'm I, I'm sitting there going, well, does it see me? You know, because if I can see it i know it can see me if it if it wanted to you know if it turned its head just right and i seen it sway a little bit and looking around a tent i think maybe i'm not sure of exactly what it was looking at i couldn't really tell that distinctly but uh yeah i was doing this little sway thing looking around that tent and i think it was because a guy was yelling at it earlier because he thought it was somebody else in camp and his camp messed around with stuff you know, a few minutes earlier. So, you know, you get, you, people heard him yell, excuse me. 
can I help you? He was thinking somebody from the camping trip was in his tent area getting in his stuff, but it wasn't. It wasn't. And, and the, the trail and everything proves that it, it was something else. Because when he said that, you could see where something walked off, went into the tree line, and then came back around a short distance around to where we were and it came out again. So I think it was just kind of like looking around to make sure nobody was moving. And I don't think it's seen me. You know, my, my point being at that, that exact moment was if this thing wants me, this car is not going to stop it. You know, it could easily just jerk me out of that car and I wouldn't have a, a, a chance in hell, excuse me, but I wouldn't, you know. So I'm just like, well, Let's just, you know, make, make, you know, make myself small. Cause you know what they say about a small target, <laughs> you know, just make yourself small. And, uh, I just got back in the position I was in and, and it, it just went on its way and did its thing, you I'm know? So really uh, disappointed you didn't jump out of the car to say hi. Just I, so. Yeah, no, no. Cause nobody, nobody was outside the tent their tents there was nobody out there i you know it would have been no pictures no video it would just wouldn't have been worth it <laughs> i mean if we would have got pictures and video well all right i would have done it <laughs> so i mean that would have been the best evidence in the world you know <laughs> yeah. but you know i mean it, it it's just that that moment when you're sitting there and you're you're really trying to figure out and work it through your head, what am I seeing? What am I seeing? Mm -hmm. You know, because I was going through everything. I'm like, well, is that a person? No, that's too it, just the 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 chest area and down to the waist was just massive and it was wide. And I'm like, no. And then I'm thinking, okay, maybe a bear, because there's bear in the area. You know, I have a bear spray and all that. And I'm like, okay, that's it ain't gonna bother me. I don't have any food, so I'm I'm okay. It wasn't a bear. Absolutely not. Not when I caught the view because it was sit standing kind of kitty corner to me where I could see, you know, most of the chest, the shoulder, you know, down to about the shins is where I could see. And then, you know, how I was sitting in my car, I, I didn't really want to move anymore. So I couldn't see down to its feet, but I saw up to that point, I couldn't see its backside at all. So when it was swaying, it, it looked to me like it was looking around to see if anybody else was moving. And if it did see me or did hear me, um, it didn't really care. It didn't care. So, you know, I mean, it, it's those things that really, bring it home. You can yeah. see things off in a distance like I did with Tex and and we we can talk about it and we can we can do all kinds of things with it but when you see it that close there's no denying it. There's you know it's what? I'm like about, I'm, I'm, about, I'm, I'm about tired of you diminishing the encounter you had with me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I know. I know. But I can honestly say I'm no longer a believer, I'm a knower. Yeah. So I'm in that group. Yep. You see something that close, there's no denying it. No. Ab ab no. Absolutely not. You know, and people were asking me if I um, saw any orbs or anything like that. No. Ab no. It was completely flesh and blood. There was, you know, there was nothing paranormal, supernatural, anything about it. It was just straight up flesh and blood right in front of me. So... Um, that's not to say that those things don't happen. It's just, that's my encounter. That's what I witnessed. But with Tex and I, you know, we're staring out there. We're, we're in Brown Springs, Monica, where you're coming, <clears throat> you're coming mm -hmm. with us. You're, you're going. So just mark it on your calendar. Now we'll keep you updated. Okay. So we're, we're standing in the cemetery and we can see this, this creature walking. And it's bipedal. Every it's walking. Bit. And you could see it going behind trees and coming back out, behind trees and coming back out. I mean, we saw it. We saw and we saw it, it at a distance. And it was still huge. 
at a well, distance. When you say when you say a distance, but the distance we're mm -hmm. talking about was maybe 50, 60 feet. It wasn't that far off. No, that's not that well, far. yeah, true, true, true. You know, I mean, it was just back in the trees. Yeah. But I mean, it it was it it was ever bit of eight feet tall. Oh yeah. yeah. And yeah, then, and it, then it, it was, and then we had high. whatever that was <laughs> run that armadillo out of the woods for you know to us and <laughs> and then charge us a little bit. So mm -hmm. you know, there's that, but yeah, there is that. But yeah, when you put when you put eyeballs on it. And you can make out the details and, and everything. Yeah. That that's a whole that's that takes it to a yeah. whole new level. It really, really does. You yeah, know? that that brought yeah. it home. So um anybody going to the first fish fry, you know, we'll take you right on up there and show you exactly where it happened. Yeah. You know, that's uh that's a cool place anyway. So I mean, I do recommend just going to look at it no matter what. But yeah. Nick's in the chat, he was there. Yeah, you know, on all this happened. So, and we caught the weirdest. Okay, I'm not an orb guy. Okay, I'm just not. Yeah. Um, no. but when we when he caught this, when Nick caught this thing on thermal, and you could not see it with the naked eye, only on thermal, and it was hovering about maybe eight to 12 inches off the ground and it was circular in general shape, but it was undulating like lava in a lava land. Yes. Okay. I thought, and yeah, Monica would be very interested to see that. I'm sure. It didn't do this. It, it, it do I mean, this? it was, it looked, it looked like a bubble in a lava lamp. It really did. Mm -hmm. And it was, and I walked towards it. And it kept the same distance away from me as I moved mm -hmm. towards it. And when I moved back, it kept the same distance from me when I moved back. So it was moving across the ground. Okay. Um, so, but we even, and it's like Nick just put it, he did a comparison on video of rabbits. You know, because when a rabbit, a rabbit will crawl. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, but we wanted to put that, you know, to, that comparison together to make sure that we weren't, you know, seeing a rabbit. Okay. Not that a rabbit's going to crawl away from you. Okay. They're not, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was, it was not that. That is the first orb. I can't say. Okay. Maybe the first orb I saw was like a pin light. But I don't really count that. I, I don't know what that was. But this thing was on thermal for minutes. I mean, minutes we sat yes. there and filmed this thing. Yeah. Because well, I mean, we watched it. We all looked. We all looked at it through yeah. through the night vision. We all looked at it. You know, and and you would think, okay, maybe it's something on the lens. Maybe it's something like right. to do with the night vision, something like that. But you'd turn away and it was gone. But you turn back and there it was. Right. So, you know. Well, not only that, y'all filmed me walking towards it. Yeah. And it was moving away from me, but keeping yeah. the same distance. And then yeah. when I backed off, it did the same thing and went right back to where it was. Uh -huh. So it was moving with intelligence. I have no explanation for that. Well, I mean, we were in I, a graveyard. So, you know. Well, I, Monica, have you ever run into something like that? I mean, normally when we speak of orbs we don't think of them like pulsating and 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 you know moving around mm -hmm. we don't think of that we think of them just as an orb and they just kind of pass their way and, and take a little path and move on have you ever yes i've run had them, like that? Mm -hmm. i've had them in east texas around graveyards and around um i don't know if you guys are familiar with bragg road the Bragg Road ghost lights. The what? Uh, the ghost light out in Bragg Road, oh, Sarasota. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've seen them up in the tops of trees 
and they look they're small they look like fireflies but i mean we're talking the tops of the pines i mean if it was a firefly that high up it wouldn't you know i wouldn't be able to see it very well so it's something that's you know keeping the size of a firefly you'd see you know across the yard maybe 60 feet up a tree um, right and they don't glow in and out like a firefly or they're a constant right. light but they're they're zigzagging up through the treetops mm -hmm. i've seen that and then i've seen the ghost light on bragg road and that's why i asked if, if it was pulsating because what i saw was getting larger and smaller and it would get larger and smaller and no matter how close we were racing towards it because you know we were we were driving directly towards it it was it was after a, a thunderstorm or the only cars on the road it was like two in the morning um we were the only tracks in turned around coming back out we were the only tracks coming out and i see the light and i'm thinking it was a motorcycle right so it's right. about the size of the motorcycle headlight until it started getting larger and then it would get smaller and then it would get larger and then it would get smaller but no matter how close we got to it 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 never changed diameter you know other, other than growing larger and smaller if that makes uh -huh. sense like uh -huh. you know we didn't get closer to it or farther away from it it always seemed to stay the same distance from us and as we're coming you know what i perceive to be closer to it um i'm looking in the mud for you know tire tracks going off you know like is was there a guy on a motorcycle because eventually it got large and just blinked out and wow. um, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't, you know, somebody on a motorcycle. Um, and, uh, it, you know, I, I never saw any tracks other than our own. So I'm just, it was the ghost light as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we have some in Missouri. It's, it's called the spook lights and it's in mm -hmm. Joplin, Missouri. And you can no longer get to that particular road that that everybody sees them but we found or our friend found out that there is a road a dirt road that runs adjacent with with this road and sure enough we're not seeing that spectacular bright light that they talk about but i was seeing like little sparkles of red and all kinds of different colored lights that that were unexplained you know mm -hmm. they're they we had nothing going on out there. So, I mean, it wasn't even on that particular road. It was just one running adjacent with it. And they were you know, there. There was one that I saw when I was in Colorado, now that I think about it. Um, we were in the South San Juan wilderness area and mm -hmm. um, we were dispersed camping. Um, we didn't get as far as we wanted to because the Conejos River was just too swift. It was too deep and too swift for us to cross. So we were stuck on, you know, the right one side of it. and um we decided to um hike up the mountains we were already on like ten thousand feet elevation i mean we we're it was thin if we stood up too fast you'd fall over <laughs> i mean the air was thin up where we were but we were um we were doing some research up in there and we'd split off into to some groups and um my husband and i were looking down into camp from where we were and we saw a red light come into camp and we weren't the only ones that saw it. There was another group um, a little bit to the east of us that saw it come in into camp. And we thought at first it was just one of, you know, the team coming back early um, uh -huh. and they were using their red headlights. But when, you know, we did a check of everybody, there wasn't, there wasn't anybody in camp, you know, that, well, there wasn't anybody in camp. I think I think one of the guys might have left his wife in camp, but she didn't have a red headlamp, and um, she was in bed. She was asleep at the time because I mean we were up late, and I couldn't for the right. life of me figure out what that was. And let me tell you, that South San Juan Wilderness area that is that's spooky, and that is a place that we didn't have a lot other than that that weird red light coming to camp. Didn't have a lot uh -huh. happen, but I had nightmares about that place for like a good year after we got back. It just, it was unsettling being huh. in there. 
just being there was unsettling. Just, yeah, just the general feeling. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and if you look it up, I mean, it's apparently it's got a history of weird things happening. I didn't know that. I, it's, um, I was going there because um, it was the ghost grizzly was there. It was the last grizzly shot in the lower 48 was shot in the area. And um, there were some sightings, uh, some Bigfoot sightings, you know, kind of sprinkled around. And I thought it would be a, a pretty cool place for us to go and investigate in the wilderness area. And so that's why I chose the place. But turns out it was, it you know, just the valleys in the area are just chock full of weirdness. Interesting. Like UFOs and just paranormal things happening, you know. Yeah, well, because that, that was one of my que questions that I was going to ask you is like, what's one of those places like you're like, nope, not going to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to go there me, again. Uh, I don't need to go back. I mean, part of me wants to go back just to be like, is that in my head? Like, do I still oh, feel that yeah. same way? Like, if I go back there, would I still feel that same way? Or was it just like my mind playing tricks on me? Like, what caused that? But yeah, yeah, what that, that's that? one of the, yeah, that's one of the areas like it, it just gave me the creeps after I left. I mean, I can't say I huh. felt really weird while I was there other than just exhausted. But um, the the feeling afterward is what was is what got you. Yeah, it's what got me like it, it took me a while to get over it for some reason. And I couldn't like put my finger on like, why do I feel this it's like there's no reason for me to feel this mm. way, but I did. Yeah. Well, let's hear Let's hear about Christy. We missed that text. We we, we totally blew past that one. Oh, I, I, did, I haven't forgot about it. I was fixing to ask how many times I have to ask about it before you tell me. But <laughs> <laughs> the ghost, the ghost car. Okay. Yeah, the so ghost the car. car rolled up on me. So um, I had picked this particular um, campground because, you know, the remote little areas that you could reserve and it was away from the rest of the campers. And um, I was doing a training camp for uh, the organization that I was with. And I wanted to come in the night before to set up camp and kind of get everything ready. And I was driving down from Dallas with a friend of mine and we didn't get there till it was pretty late. It was maybe one in the morning because we both had to work and then we had to drive, you know, five hours out to this place. And uh, we got there and a friend of mine from Louisiana, who was also in the group, he got there uh, before us and he was um, already setting up camp in one of the other campsites, like one of the main row of campsites. He wasn't up in the secluded area that we had reserved. So we stopped and talked to him and he was getting his stuff put together. And um, I said, hey, when you're done, you mind coming over and helping us, um, you know, get everything put together. We're real tired and it's hot. It was it was in the middle of summer, so it was still you know, sticky and humid out there. And he said, sure, no problem. So we drive over to the remote area. We pull into our camps, uh, our campsite and um, I leave the car running. Right. And uh, we pull in, you know, head first into the campsite. It's dark. There are no lights back there there's a there's one light like way back in the parking lot that kind of barely illuminates the area and um i turn our headlights off and i just leave the car running in the ac on because i'm like i don't want to get into this sticky mess so we're both laying there you know with our eyes closed kind of you know just waiting and maybe 30 seconds goes by and I hear gravel crunching and I'm thinking, dude, he didn't have to jump in his car and follow us over that fast. Like I want to enjoy the AC. And uh, I open my eyes and my, the interior of my car is completely illuminated. And I look in my side view mirror and I see a car pulling in behind me. Right. And I can hear the tires crunching on the gravel. I see these big round headlights pulling up and then the lights uh -oh. turn off and they're like incandescent. Right. And the lights turn off, but I can see the filament dimming. And I didn't even dawn on me that, you know, headlights don't do that anymore. Right. <laughs> and so, right. And I remember looking at Melissa and I'm like, dude, I don't want to get out. He could have waited. So I get out of my car and I'm kind of angry. And I 
kind of shut the door and I, I'm walking back towards the back of the car and I'm looking down, I'm annoyed. And I look up to say, you could, you know, you could have given me a minute and there is nothing there, crickets. There is nothing behind me. And so I'm standing at the back of the car and Melissa's standing across from me and we're looking at each other. And I said, you saw that, right? Like, it was not just me. Like, you saw that. Like, the interior of the car was lit up, like, fully lit up. And she said, yeah, yeah, I saw that. I mean, yeah, it was lit up and you heard the tires crunching. I said, yeah, yeah, there was a car behind us. I said, get in the car. <laughs> We sat there and about five minutes later, he pulls up and, you know, we told him what happened and he was like, wow, that's weird. And then he helped us set up our tent. <laughs> we were so tired. We just crawled in and went to sleep. But you know, so like, what do you mean that's weird? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, he investigated the paranormal too. And he was probably pretty tired. He was just like, I, I'm just like, he didn't want to be out in the sticky heat either. He's like, let me just help you set this up so I can get back to my tent. <laughs> right, right. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> Just not now. Not now. <laughs> I yeah, couldn't imagine yeah. that. I. Mm -mm. Because I don't. Because I mean, having cars run up on you when you're camping is not an uncommon thing. No. You know. Having them um, disappear into thin air is a little unusual. That is a little different. Yeah, that is a little different. And it's just so weird. I mean, it's so random. That's what's. I know. So all you saw was a head. Okay, back up. So you open your eyes. Your your car is mm -hmm. illuminated by the lights from the headlights of the car. Yeah. Because I turn mine off. So it's the car right. behind me pulling in that's lighting up the interior. Right. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Um, but then... All right. So then the car lights go off. Right? Yeah. Do you see the outline of the car? I don't remember if I saw the outline of the car. I just remember seeing the big round headlight and then yeah, it goes but, off and I see the filament dimming. So yeah, I because they slowly cool off and then they go out. Yeah. Weird. Mm -hmm. That's weird. That's more than weird. Wow. You know, you hear the tires on the gravel, you hear the crunch, crunch, you know, the rolling. That's... Right. Now, how how long was it? How long was it before he pulled up? Oh, uh, maybe another five minutes. And you never heard crunching or anything after that? Nope. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Tex and I are like, uh, 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 <laughs> we got nothing. <laughs> we just got nothing. I mean, I, yeah, you know, crazy. hearing things crunch on the gravel walking around your tent, I've had, you know, mm -hmm. on a few occasions, I've never had anything like that happen. No. I've had cars roll. I had the grand poopaw crackheads roll up on me and pops, but um, I've never had anything just disappear. Well, I mean, it's like you don't even have to open your eyes when you when you hear a car pulling up. If you know, you know. It's just it's like yeah. you know the sound of a car pulling up. You yeah, just boy. know that. Yeah, because it's it's not like you know, step, 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 crunch, 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 crunch. No. It's like a constant. Yeah, you you know when a car's pulling up. We hear it every day. You know, you know when a car's pulling up on you. I live on a gravel road. I know when, you know, a car's passing the house, yeah. all that kind of stuff. I know that. So if it were me sitting there, I probably would have left. I'd have said, you're going to have to meet me somewhere else because this is not going to be the place. 
<laughs> this I mean, is not going to be the place. <laughs> I don't know. I've had crap laugh at me and everything else from the woods on the campsite and people roll up on me and, and everything else, but I ain't never had no car roll up, turn Just, the headlights off and then disappear. Yeah. 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 That makes you wonder if that's kind of like, I don't know if I want would call it a haunting, but something, a residual energy maybe. Yeah. I was thinking it was residual, but then I'm thinking what was going on out here. I mean, there's a swamp right in front of me. Literally, my car's pointed towards the swamp. I mean, all kinds there of stuff that happened before it was a campground, I suppose. But yeah, I guess I got to look. I mean, there's that, or there. maybe that at one time was a place where the young kids would go park. Oh, I'm sure it was. You know, or, or something know, of that nature. Or that. like you said, Monica, it could have been something bad. Hey, yeah. when I was young, I would find anywhere to go watch the submarine races with my girlfriend. So, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it's it's just so, I don't know. I just can't get over the, just the randomness of it because I know. it's not something you hear about. I, I would have to look into the camps. I would have to honestly look into the campsite over the history and see if there had been any like, you know, people killed out there or anything. I know. Like yeah. I never yeah. was able to um, find the time to get out to the courthouse there in a Woodville's the closest town. Um, and see if but there was Wood, anything. Woodville, Wood, if I were, if this is the same place I'm thinking about, Woodville, Texas, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard all kinds of freaking stories from Woodville, Texas. It's associated with weird crap going on. Well, this this place is mighty weird. <laughs> this one particular place is very strange. Obviously. They got disappearing ghost cars. Exactly. So I'm like, um... I don't know. I, don't I, don't even put that. I mean, it's really strange. So that is so strange. I want to <laughs> pardon me. You brought this up, so you can't blame me. I'm not bushwhacking you, but we got to hear. I mean, the whole kidnapping thing. Oh, the attempted kidnapping. <laughs> okay, I can get now. That if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to talk about it, and we'll leave it at that. But no, we can talk about it. Okay. Yeah, we can. But I, I'm going to have to put y'all on hold because my battery just went. And uh, really? I need to plug it in before my phone completely just shuts off here. So I apologize. Please do that. Yes. I'm I'll just so going in. <clears throat> yeah. I'll we can text right entertain now. ourselves. Yeah, we're, pretty <laughs> we're easily entertained. So that's right. Well, you know, and. Hi. and I can take this opportunity to tell the, the crackhead story again because people were asking about the me and pops were out at Brown Springs, okay? And we, we were we are usually the first ones to show up. Pops usually the first one to show up. Yes. And then yes. I show up and then we set the camp up or well. So we're 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 sitting there and we're by ourselves. And like I said, cars cars rolling up is is not it's not unusual, you know. They, they'll, they'll, most of them will roll up in your campsite. They'll see somebody's there and they'll back out. Okay. Right. Well, we had motorcycles run through ours the last time. Remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this car pulls up, and I think if I remember right, um, it had pulled up. With, I think it was the same car. It had pulled up, turned around, and left. Okay. Well, then a little while later, it pulled all the way down into camp. And this car, now I'm not judging people, folks. I, I I don't, you know, I mean, it's just, it is, it is what it is. And I hate that saying, but that's what it is. So I'm going to start saying it was what it was. But <laughs> so boy pulls up in this, if I remember, I was like an L, old LTD. I mean, you know, 80s model LTD, big old boat. And 
didn't have a hood on it. Now, hood springs were kicked up, you know, uh, out in the middle of the air. It didn't, it didn't have a, it didn't have a hood on it. And this guy drives up, he parks, he gets out. Now, what was one thing that was strange, he had a passenger in the car. Okay. And that's cool. But the passenger was in the back seat on the passenger side. Like driving Miss Crackhead. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway, he gets out of the car. The passenger stays in the car. And he walks up and this boy is tweaking. This boy is tweaking. I'm telling you. And he's like, how y'all doing? Said, We're doing pretty good. He said, man, what y'all doing? I said, Camping, he, he's looking around at all of our stuff. I mean, y'all got it going. Yep. Y'all got it going on. Y'all got it going on. I kept repeating, y'all got it going on. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're doing pretty good. You know, I mean, me, me and Pops are kind of looking at each other like, all right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so what we another thing that we noticed, <laughs> Pop says tweaking is not the word for it. Um, so. Another thing we notice is there's no battery where the battery should be in this car. Like I said, it don't have a hood on it. So the, the battery is not where it's supposed to be. There's wires that are running from where the battery should be across the top of the engine to a battery that is sitting up by the windshield on the passenger side. <laughs> oh, like bungee down right next. I mean, it's setting up out of the engine. <laughs> Needless to say, it's not street legal at uh, any point. And mm. like, what in the world? I was trying to figure out why. And well, me and Pops were just trying to after this happened. And finally, he got back in a car and he he, he left. You know, of course, we're on guard the rest of the night, you know, <laughs> but um, we couldn't, we couldn't even, we could not figure out that would, that why you would do the battery like that. Um, <laughs> because all the connections are right there where the battery's at. Why? And, and, why are you going to run the battery and extend the wires over the cross the top of the engine and, and bungee the battery up next to the windshield in the engine compartment? <laughs> but yeah, now I, something else we had, I, I don't know. <laughs> something else interesting we had, um, we was at the other campsite, the, the one, the one that you were at, Brandy, uh -huh. um, we were down there and we had a couple of guys come up and they were hunting and they were, they were, they pulled up and I said, you know, how you doing? Whatever. And I said, Hey, uh, y'all mind if we go check our game cameras we got set up? Cause a lot of people hunt down there and let's no, go right ahead. They were bow hunters. And of course we start talking to them and y'all ever had anything weird happen? or anything and or no this was before that they said you know we're come down here to check the batteries and stuff in our cameras and all that kind of stuff I said okay they said wow donnie thank you thank you donnie um, before we asked them of anything weird they um they said they were there to check their cameras and stuff they said because our camera batteries keep dying within a week <laughs> You know, and game cameras, you can set them out for like a month. You know, I had I had one set out there for three weeks, and it was still had plenty of battery. And that was in the cemetery, believe it or not. But yeah, um, mine mine lasts for a long time too. So yeah, yeah. but they they were they were frustrated because their batteries kept dying like within a week of <laughs> game cameras. Um, and they had actually caught a uh, caught a bear, a black bear, on on one of their game cameras. So. 
let's see what what is Donnie says. Donnie Cho says stuff. Thank you very much, brother. Um, were you more concerned with the security, or were you more perplexed, or the battery situation? Well, you know, it's a tie. <laughs> it's a tie. <laughs> You know, it, it was kind of like if if their thought process <laughs> yeah. is running like that to connect a battery, who knows what else they'll do? You well, know, and what I and another thing that we didn't understand is the the passenger in the back seat on the passenger side, nobody else in the car, just him driving Miss Crackett around. But, you know. a lot of things about that that didn't make any sense <laughs> a lot of things you know and yeah. i mean that's just a tip of the iceberg or some weird stuff that's happened out there you know finding the the women's clothes off in the woods you know the whole wardrobe and, and you know i mean everything it was either a child or a small female it was one of the two but um you know having laughing on both sides of the camp when there's nine or ten of us in camp and that type of thing and you know it uh things walking beside your tent at night and huffing at you right beside your ear that type of thing um nick he's he's a Nick's he he's in chat. Last time we were out there, our in fact, or uh, yeah, it was our last trip right before y'all got there. We stayed the night out there by ourselves, yeah. and uh, we had stuff walking around and and uh, actually pushed the side of his tent in, and then we had the the whole log on uh, that was taken from our campfire was really weird. There was it was missing the next day and, and we, he had heard stuff messing around. I mean, they were walking all over the, but whatever, I don't know what it was, but whatever was walking all over camp. And he heard it up there by the campfire was. And mm -hmm. then we found this log that was eight feet long and about that big around tossed over in some grass next to my tent. Pops found it the next day when he mm -hmm. showed up and we looked for drag marks, for track marks, for anything that walked through the, to, to, you know, I was, I was trying so hard to figure out a, a, a normal reason why this thing had gotten to where it was. I was like, okay, did a beaver come up, climb the 15 foot bank of the river, walk 300 yards through the trees and try to drag this log from our campfire back down with him. I don't see that happening, but I guess it's a possibility. But there was no marks in this grass. This grass was about a foot tall where anything else had been around this thing. Okay, it was just, the grass was just laid down where the stick, where the log was. Something had picked this thing up and tossed it over in the grass. I don't know. I do not know. I know we had stuff walking around us. I don't know what it was. I know we, we were laying there and I'm listening to this stuff. I, I don't, I, I didn't have a rain fly on my tent and it's all screen, right? I'm just waiting for something to peek over the side. That's what I'm hoping. For. And Nick was all buttoned up. And I'm listening to this thing walk around and, and I hear Nick from his tent go, Tex, is that you? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> and, then after, nope. and then after he got really close to his tent, he goes, all right, y'all get close. Get away. <laughs> you know, type thing. That's a little too but, close. But nothing ran off. They never ran off. They just mm -hmm. built around the camp. And I was like you, I was like you were, Brandy, when you were in your car. I, I didn't want to move, you know, yeah. because I didn't want to spook it. And yep. looking looking back on it, if that if that ever happens again, I'm gonna set up. The problem is when you're in that that even the uh, the uh, mosquito netting, the you know that reflects your light, and you can't really see out. Nope. You know, um, I think what I want is I want a 
Yeah, Nick said it went on from about 10 p.m. to like 2 a.m. Then just milling around the camp. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we're, we're camped right next to a plum thicket, which wow. is, oh, yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Nick's like, I couldn't sleep. I didn't have a problem. I went right to sleep. But um, it's just... I want I want to rig up not a camera, but an exterior light with a remote control that would flood the whole area if I turned it on. At least something, you know, something. You know, I mean, I might you might kick that light on and get a you know, but I mean, you know, you might have to change your underwear after that, but that'd be all right too. <laughs> have an experience you'd have a story to tell right yeah like i don't have enough of them um <laughs> get a brand new one. Oh yeah and, and folks you know, they, they do they do they do recommend now this is from the tribal police and the sheriff's department they do recommend you come armed out there but they recommend a sidearm because you can't carry a long gun unless you have your hunting license your oklahoma hunting license so, because it is pigs freaking galore out there. Yes, it is. I found all kinds of evidence out there. Um, oh, we've had them come up in camp. So, you know. yeah. Yeah. You know, they're, they're rooting around. You can see where they're bedding down at night. You can see the prints. They're, they're out there. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a very interesting place, and and the place the the place we've been camping is like it's like almost four miles from the cemetery, and then it's like almost a half a mile off the off the main road, so it's back there, you know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, still, you're only if you know what ten minute drive from the casino. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so, it's not that far out of there. Mm-hmm. No, and you can, you know, in 35s right there, you can hear that. that. That's the problem with that place. There's so much noise pollution and uh-huh. even some light pollution when you get up. When you get up, um, especially on the cemetery now, if you get up on top of that hill, you got noise pollution or noise and light pollution from, you know, this, the, uh, what do you call it? So the, the casino. And, yeah. But we haven't figured out. Now, Monica, this is something where we had happened. The cone of silence. This was yeah. so weird. Because, okay, Brandy, I'm going to ask you. You made the trip. How long, how far do you think it is from where we park our trucks to the top of the cemetery? Where we, we make that walk up that hill? I, 100 yards? 100, 150 yards? Yeah, I, I would say 100 yards or less. Oh, okay. Okay. Less. All right. So, which is even, see, and I was talking, I was saying 200 yards, but see, the, that's even harder to explain if it's less than 100 yards. So, I was, this is what happened, Monica. I was doing a show up there by myself. I was doing a solo show one night and my, my phone died. Okay. So my safety team came up there to get me. And this is when the handprints happened and all that kind of stuff. So they come up there to get me. I'm hollering at the top of my lungs. Now, I know I'm a soft-spoken person, but that's beside the point. I'm, I'm doing whoops at the top of my lungs, okay, and yelling at the top of my lungs. They never hear me. They're hollering at me. I never hear them. We did. We could not hear each other until they got up in on top of the in, the in the cemetery, and we got within line of sight of each other. Mm-hmm. But when you're up there, you can hear the highway noise, and you can hear not only the highway. You can hear when somebody drives down the gravel road. That's a hundred yards or less. Mm-hmm. 
but we could not hear each other hollering at each other that night. That's weird. Well, yeah, Very I weird. mean, that, yeah, you got to take into consideration too the night that Tex and I saw, you know, right. the this the the Bigfoot just walking. Right, we see it walking. Right. We cannot hear it walking. Now, Nick and my friend Holly were right behind us. We were back to back. They were facing the other way. Tex and I were facing, you know, looking at this thing. We could not hear it walk, but they were hearing something walk, but we couldn't. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. They said, yeah, we can hear something out there walking around and we're like, we're hearing nothing, but we can see it. Huh. I don't know. It's just a very odd place. It'll be, you need to come. You need to come. Yeah. You, you're going to be like, whoof. <laughs> mm -mm. I, there's so much weird stuff that happens out there. I, you just, and that's, and that's the problem we're having is we can't determine anymore what, I mean, unless you put eyeballs on it during like the day, or if it's, if it's close enough where you can see details, we can't determine that it's a physical creature. Right. Because there's so much paranormal stuff that goes on out there. Right. You know, I mean, I've, I've got, I've got a recording. It's on the channel, folks. Go look at it. it it's, it's me getting, I'm at the bottom of the cemetery. This was creepy as hell. I'm at the bottom of the cemetery. I'm about to go up by myself. I'm getting my gear ready for out of my truck. And for like five minutes, this I've got growls coming over my microphone that I never heard. Mm -hmm. I'm walking up the trail, and I think it's about 10 minutes into the trip or something like that. There's a female voice that goes, come on, right in my microphone. I never heard Monica's it. Monica's just smiling. She's like, yeah. You know, <laughs> so, sounds like my kind of place. <laughs> <laughs> you've got, you've got all this kind of weird stuff going on, and it, the place has got a very very dark history. I mean, there's yeah. been murders and missing people, and I mean the whole nine yards. You know, yeah. It, so if you show up, if you show up for the fish fry, you will get <laughs> the ten cent tour with Tex, <laughs> yeah. and he will tell yeah. you all the history. I'm going to research the history now. <laughs> right, right. Well, the thing about it is, and I think we got, oh, we're almost on two hours. Yes. But, but we um, need to hear her story, Tex. Yes, we do. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to talk about myself. I apologize. <laughs> we just, we <laughs> giggle because we here. love the place, you know. Well, we love Brown here, Springs. You know, That's why we giggle about it. <laughs> people aren't here to hear me talk. They're, they're here to hear, you know, Monica's stuff, so. They're, no. they're just along for the ride no matter who's talking right <laughs> oh and, and and monica real quick um titan asked this and i want to put this out there because he wanted to know your thoughts on this now tex and i were up in the cemetery and we'd run across some burnt pictures uh mm. some candles uh mm -hmm. things like that that uh i told tex not to touch I said, don't touch mm -hmm. it. But it was mm -hmm. in a cemetery. Now you got to understand the cemetery is very old. And um, would you, I don't know if I would put that in a witchcraft, ter uh, you know, in territory or would I put it in occult territory? Because uh, these, well, it's, it, it's it was hard to, to determine say. because there was, Burnt stuff in the candle. Now there was no, there was no okay. uh, wax mm -hmm. left in the candle. Right. There were things burnt up in the candle, outside the candle, and the there were still visible pictures laying beside all of this. It was okay. specifically of one of one man and one woman, and they weren't in pictures together. They were all separate pictures. Okay, what kind of, what kind of a candle was it? It was like one of those tall glass candles. Uh -huh. Like uh 
like a prayer candle one uh the very tall ones and skinny uh -huh. yeah yeah it was one of those but there was no wax in it, it left in it it was down. it was it was com burnt completely down and it, it didn't have um like any of the saints or anything on the outside of it nope. it was just like a clear glass yep yep okay um i would put that more yeah i would put that more in um witchcraft or like voodoo hoodoo something like that mm -hmm. somebody was trying to cast for sure uh, uh -huh. it's hard to say what they were trying to do you know without really knowing what color what color was the candle do you remember well was it white? We or couldn't black tell. Or red? There was like nothing left. Oh, there was like literally nothing left of it. Nothing oh, left. Nothing. Nothing. Mm. Yeah. Was it on a grave or was it just in the graveyard? Well, it was in the graveyard. Come, well, it was in the graveyard, but the thing so, about it is there's so many I unmarked. I would guess. That, but okay, let, let me I'm going let me I tell you guess, real quick. Let, let me tell you real quick. The youngest, the youngest death date in this cemetery is 1924. Okay. okay. The pictures that were on by this candle were modern pictures. Oh, yes. Yeah, it, it's definitely something modern. I would say that it's probably somebody trying to break, either break these, break these people up or make them sick. Because typically cemetery work is um, like you use grave dirt is not good you're not using grave dirt for anything good and you're not right. casting in the cemetery trying to help somebody typically. right right um so um i would say somebody was um not up to anything nice <laughs> with those photos well, this is the same place <laughs> this is the same place that we got surrounded by cop cars at the bottom of the seminary because they were looking for a group of witches that were out there sacrificing chickens. So. Well, <laughs> okay. Like if you're in a graveyard sacrificing chickens, you're just misled. <laughs> 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 I mean, I have done, I mean, I've been a part of that, like, like witchy stuff for a long time. Like I, you know, read about it, I've practiced it, you know, I've, I've done a lot of things that have been immersed in it for a long time. And I just, there's a lot of different beliefs out there. It's hard to tell what people are trying to do. I just know if you're in a cemetery and, you know, Typically, you're not up to any kind of good if you're right. So, do you, do you in the cemetery? Right. So, do you believe that they were in the cemetery doing this because they were using dirt from a grave? They could have been. Yeah, if they okay. were using dirt from a grave, they they were trying to make somebody sick for sure. Yeah, because some of the pictures were very dirty and they were stuck together from moisture, so we couldn't really tell. Um, we didn't touch mm -hmm. this with our hands. Trust me. We, we didn't touch mm -hmm. it with our hands. We were kind of poking it with a stick, mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of trying to move it. Um, but it was very yeah. dirty. So, I mean, like grave dirt. Yeah. You can use it when you're performing spells, you can mix it up and you can use it in like, um, like, um, it's called duper dust or duper dust. It's different in different areas. It, okay. It's like a hexing, like you blow it the people so okay fixing, okay kind of a all right powder. well let's um, text let's just move on to the, her story so because <laughs> yeah no no yeah no as you can imagine let's move on to her story real quick because we've kept her on for a long time yeah you guys are running so long you sure you want to hear it i'll tell you can you hear me the, the, Warning to everybody. <laughs> I'm looking at Tex. He's, he's looking at something. I'm like, Tex, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, you know, sitting here listening. But uh, Monica, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of breaking up a little bit. Uh -oh. So, hmm. 
let's see. Let me make sure I got everything going on here. Now you're good. Any better? Now you're yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Here, let me try this. Yeah, we um, yeah, I want to hear this story because we've kept you on really long. This is longer than we normally go. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's uh, it's our it's our fault. It's our fault. <laughs> we get to talk, and it sometimes we're like, "Oh, geez, we gotta go." <laughs> Let's look at the time. So, uh, okay. So the attempted kidnapping. Uh, it is. Oh, it was an interesting story. So this is more of a cautionary tale, I think, like Tex was saying earlier, um, especially for new people um, in. The research, you know, you're meeting people online. I think you get a, a false sense of security. You talk to people yeah. online. You feel like you you know them very well, and you maybe never met them in person. And that goes for research. That goes for dating. I feel like that goes for a lot of things these days. Um, and this took place the year after we filmed Monster Quest. Um, oh, so yeah, okay. So it was a minute ago. So we, the, the ladies and I had gone up to um, Gifford Pinchot, that's where it was filmed. And we were with Rick Knoll and a, you know, a film guy. And, you know, we were out there doing our thing. And Kathy um, was on the Bigfoot forums at the time. This was a long time ago. And she had told, um, Brian Brown and a couple of other people. Hey, you know, we're up here. If you guys are in the area, stop by and say hi. So um, Brian and, and a couple of other guys came over and we all got to talking and, you know, hanging out. And the entire time we were there, it rained. So everything was damp. Everything was damp. Nothing we owned was dry. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the guys that was in the group with Brian lived down in Stevenson and which was one of the closer towns. It was still like an hour, a little over an hour down the mountain. Um, and he offered to take our stuff and, you know, to his house and, you know, wash it and dry it for us, which was really very kind because I just wanted something. To dry. <laughs> and um, he was very nice, you know, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. We were just chit chatting, you know, he was talking to all of us and I remember mentioning a specific song that I liked and, you know, we're just, you know, I try to be friendly, like I was at the conference uh -huh. with y'all, you know, and just, I'm a talker and I try to make everybody feel at ease and, you know, I try to be easy to talk to. So, you know, that was, right. that was our situation while we were filming. Well, the next year we all got back together and we decided to make it an annual thing, right? We'd all go back every year and just kind of camp and hang out and, you know, do a little research when we could but just you know get out and have fun and uh -huh. he joined us this this guy joined us and he was nice again seemed really cool and um he had set up this really very nice canvas tent and it was one of the canvas tents that looked like a cabin and it had like a heater in it like a, an actual wood burning stove in it and mm -hmm. he was like, oh, you, you and Melissa don't need to, you know, set up your tent. You could stay in my tent and this and that. And, and that worked out. Everything was great. And um, it, everything was cool until the last night um, or second to the last night, we, we had uh, to go investigate a sighting somebody had. And um, he wanted to drive and he started acting real real squirrely i was the only one allowed to sit in the front seat and when we got in the car he had that song that i mentioned the year before like queued up and he was like i've, I've got something i got something for you and i was like, okay <laughs> and the song starts playing like queued up to the song that i barely remember even mentioning to him and we come flying down the road. He's driving insane. He's just, he's acting a little irrational. Like, a little irrational. Uh, we get to the siding, do our thing, get back to camp. Everybody's kind of standing around the fire. Everybody calm down. Um, he's in the tent with his wife. 
and he comes back out. So it is Brian and Jerry and this guy and Melissa and I standing around the campfire and it is fully dark now. And Brian and Jerry say, hey, let's go for a drive. Let's, let's, let's go down to some meadow. And I was like, I want to go. I want to go. <laughs> and they were like, you know, right. Jerry's, yeah, and Jerry's truck, he, Jerry had this tiny, tiny little Toyota. And they're like, you know, there's no room for you guys. It's, no, you can't go. So I'm standing at the campfire. Melissa has to use the bushes. So she wanders off. So it's just me and dude over here. And the minute that the guys drive off, like you can still see their taillights on the dirt road. Mr. Dude turns to me and he goes, I want to take you to my secret research area. You want to go see my secret research area? And I was like, uh, no, sure. <laughs> oh. like, okay. And uh, he's like, okay, well, I, I got to go tell the missus. I was like, all right. <laughs> so he goes into the tent and I, he's like, he unlocks the truck. He's like, go get in the truck and, and I'll be there in a minute. So I walk over to the truck and Mel Melissa comes out of the, the woods and I look at her and I was like, listen, <laughs> you don't have to get in the truck, but I would appreciate it if you got in the truck with me. <laughs> right. So. She, right. I was like, he wants to show me his secret research area and he's acting weird. And he waited until like the guys left and get in the truck. So, <laughs> she crawled in the back seat. I crawl in the front seat and he comes out and he gets in the car and he sees her in the back seat and he is instantly angry. <laughs> he is angry that she is in the back seat. So he takes off. And um, we were, you know, out by, we were in Skookum Meadows. So we were out by, you know, the Skookum Castor and the Gifford Pinchot. These roads are just gravel roads. And he is flying down them, just kicking up gravel, dirt, you know, fish tailing, coming around corners. Um, we hit the main paved highway and it had rained earlier. So it's, it's slick. And at one point coming down the mountain, there's, a hairpin turn that you legitimately have to slow considerably down to take. It is a true hairpin turn. And he hits that thing doing, had to have been like 50. And all I can see is us like sliding sideways off the highway, like upside down in a creek because it had just rained. I'm thinking, I'm, you know, I'm going to die. You know, my kids, they're like I'm a single parent at the time. I'm like, my kids are not going to have a mom. <laughs> Right. This is acting crazy. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm trying to keep calm at the time and not freak him out any more than he's already upset. And uh, we get to a T in the road, just not far after the hairpin turn. And um, it's a point on the, as the, the asphalt road where um, you could go straight and go down into Stevenson. I could take a right and you could go down into Cougar. But there's still like, it's it, you're still high up in the mountains, but it's an intersection. And he pulls off of the road just past the T and drives into a meadow and comes up on a berm. Um, and just past the berm, they had placed some boulders, the, the highway department and place some boulders and there was a turnout there and i believe that's where they staged um snow plows in the winter because it gets a ton of snow up there and if you look to your right to my right out the window there's like you know three pine trees and i can see asphalt <laughs> it's not deep in the woods i mean you're up high in the mountains but it's not like far right off the road. right and he pulls up to this berm and parks and he goes okay this is it we're here and i'm thinking you gotta be kidding. okay so i get out of the car and i'm standing there and instead of going around the front of the truck he walks around the back of the truck and i 
tell my friend, I was like, okay, I'm like, you start walking. I was like, and if I tell you to run, I was like, you run into that tree line and you hide in the dark and you don't make a sound until the sun comes up and you know he's gone and you see cars coming. <laughs> I was like, you hide. Right. And um, she was like, okay, okay. So um, he's coming, he comes around the back of the truck and I don't know what he's doing back in the bed of the truck. And then he starts walking around the passenger side towards us. So I start walking backwards because I'm not turning my back on this guy. And right. I'm talking to him as he's coming towards me. And, you know, I'm looking to see if he has anything in his hands, which he does not. Um, and he starts telling me all about how um, he likes to come here. This is his research area. This is the place he goes. And we come up, you know, we walk over this berm and we get to these these boulders and somebody had piled rocks like just stacked rocks on top of the boulders and he's like do you see do you see they're stacking rocks and I just <laughs> looked at that and I looked at him and I said that is fascinating I was like you need to keep an eye on that and you need to report back to me what you find because I'm not poking the crazy bear when I'm out in the middle of the woods. Right. And so uh, I was like, that, yes, you need to keep me updated on what is going on here. Let's, let's go back to camp so we get in the car and drive at a reasonable speed back to camp this time. And, you know, we, we get up the black, you know, the asphalt road, we turn you know, onto the gravel roads. And I know my way by heart to the camps and Skookum Meadows, right? I can still drive there probably by heart. So, and then you turn off and it's like the second right and this and that. So we're, we're driving and we come up to the intersection where you would have to turn right to go to camp and we go straight. And I'm like, huh, we're not going to camp. That was the turn to camp. So I'm mm -hmm. like, what adventure are we going on now? So, just when you we, thought you were going to get back right so um we're going down this road and it you know it gets narrower and narrower and i'm like where where are we going where are we going friend and he said i haven't been down this road in a while i just wanted to see if it was still passable and i'm like it like one in the morning that's that's the time that's the time that's the time to check it out, you know. Yeah. And so it, I mean, it narrows into a goat path. We're in a dually. This is a humongous truck. And to one side, it slopes up into the mountain. And then we're on the goat path. And then it is straight down, like on the driver's side, just straight down. No guardrail. It's a mountain pass. And so we get to a point where there's rocks falling off the mountain. And we really can't go much farther. And so he's like, okay. And I'm thinking, I'm just going to back up like three miles. Like, how are we getting out of here? So he starts to three point turn out on the goat path. And he backs up and gets caught on the mountain and then guns it a little too hard and goes forward. And I feel the front tires lose their grip. And we start sliding forward off the edge to the point where we hit some trees and I see the headlights shining into darkness. And that's that, that's what snapped Monica. And that's when I start losing it and I start cussing and screaming. And my poor friend is in the back seat, and I tell her, open that back window. We're going out that way. Because I look out my window, and all I see is darkness. And right. I'm open them, you know, I don't know how steep the incline is. And I was like, we're, I'm not going down with this truck. I'm crawling out the back window into the back, right. and we are, we are going. And right. this guy is like, calm down. I got it. I got it. And I'm like, you've got expletive like i'm getting out of the truck one way or the other and um he does eventually somehow 
get grip. He, I don't know how he did it, but he got back on the road and got us out of there. And I was fuming. I had like just cursed this dude out and we drove in silence the rest of the way back to camp. And I had been sleeping in this guy's tent the entire time. This was the last night in camp. I had like, our tent wasn't set up. I didn't have anywhere to sleep. We were in like a compact car. It's like we could sleep in that. And um, that night he refused to turn the light off. So he kept like, it was like an interrogation. Like he wouldn't turn the, the lantern off above our heads for us to go to sleep. And then a, like every time I'd fall asleep, he'd kick the bottom of my feet to wake me up and tell me that I was like talking in my sleep, which was absurd. I, I mean, I might, maybe I snore, but I don't talk in my sleep. And right. that was my, yeah, that was my attempted kidnapping crazy person experience with somebody that seemed completely normal and yet completely unraveled, like at the tail end of the trip. That was like this, probably this I, most scared I've been like with somebody I, I knew, I felt like I knew. <laughs> You know, it kind of, it kind of threw red flags at me when he's going in to tell his wife. Yeah, but it threw red Wait flags at me when he waited for the everybody to leave camp and then tell me I'm going to take it to my research area. First, my yeah, secret. I was thinking, you know, he could have told anybody anything. Right. You know, he could have said she went, you know, into the woods to use the bathroom and never came out. Because I remember. When we were, when he missed that turn to go to camp, I started really looking at him because I was like, okay, he did, he's not going to camp. Where are we going? And, you know, he's kind of slightly built. And I was like, I can fight. I can fight. <laughs> so like, Might take me out, but they're going to know who did it. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling froggy. Oh right? my gosh. I, you know, <laughs> that could have ended bad in so, so many poorly. ways. So poorly. You know, Just I mean, he could have killed you on the way to his sight and then he could have killed you going down a road that he just wanted to see if he could pass yeah i mean he he tried to kill you several times on that trip yeah it was just all kinds of weirdness i don't know what mm. was going mm. on in that person's head i don't know what was going well, on in that person's head the moral of the story is be careful yes and and if you get who, red flags maybe friend out there yeah, yeah do not ignore the red flags. Yeah, don't ignore them. Don't don't go mm -hmm. on an adventure like I did. Don't don't say yes because y you want to go. <laughs> yeah, because just you say no obligated. because you should yeah. do it. Go a different way. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Sleep in the compact car. Right, but you were you know you were sharing the tent with him and his wife, and your friend yeah. and. You, I, I understand where you're coming from. You didn't even think anything about it. Yeah. I mean, it was just. And like that switch flipped. Yeah. It was just really. Yeah, he, he got. <clears throat> he uh, was not happy when he did not have you alone. Yeah, yeah he had other clear. plans. He definitely yeah. had other plans. That yeah. was clear. That's yeah. So I told my friend, like, you don't have to, but I would appreciate it if you got in the car. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was, that, as, as, <laughs> and as like somebody said, you know, and it was going through my head, too. It puts the lotion on its skin. Yeah. So that's what it's told. I was like, yeah. Like, is yeah. he going to put you down some hole somewhere and, and there was leave a you there? Or... From camp. I mean, we just assumed it was where a vault toilet had been at one point in time. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the people in our camp had found a hole, like maybe 30 yards out in the woods. It's like a hole. We just assumed somebody had put, like, there's a lot of hunters in the area. We just assumed somebody had set up, like a lot of people use that as a camp. It had been a vault toilet at one point in time. But, you know, now mm -hmm. that you think about it, I could have been in the hole with the basket. Yeah. <laughs> put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> Well, anyway, Tex, we're sitting at two hours and 25 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Ooh, boy, it's easy to talk to you, Monica. I'm serious because that, that last story had me silent. <laughs> <laughs>
Time flies oh. when you're listening to that creeps. Yeah. Oh, that is one of the creepiest story. And, you know, and it was a great night to tell that story because for number one, it was just downright creepy. You know, we're, we're, we're in October, we're in creepy month, but mm. for it to be true makes it even worse. You know, people are the uh, scariest things. I'm telling you some of the, oh, scariest yeah. Things yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. But with well, that being we, said, well, I'll tell you what, when you come out to Brown Springs, I'll show you my secret research. <laughs> <laughs> and don't worry, Monica. I know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're safe. <laughs> you are absolutely <laughs> safe. Oh, Lord. I'm not getting any red flags. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Well, again, thanks for everybody for joining us and sticking with us for so long. This has been awesome. Yes. Um, yes. We, we're going to have, uh, if she will come back, we'll, we're going to bring her back because she's got a lot more stories and she's got, a, she's just, I want to get into the whole uh, legends of the British Isles and stuff like that. Oh, I yeah. just that that's just fascinating. Yeah, we didn't even get to that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, Two and a half hours later, and we didn't get to it. Yeah, no doubt. So don't don't forget, folks. The fish fry flash meet greet in Brown Springs. We're looking at November third, fourth, and fifth. Um, Y'all come and join us next week. We're going to have a first members only live. So. If you want to do that, you know, you got to become a member. It's three bucks a month. And we're going to do that ever. We're going to do that once or twice a month. So you'll get, you know, to spend time with us. And, you know, and every once in a while we'll bring somebody on like Monica or something like that. And we can actually sit, you can actually get up and talk to us. So, you know, it, it's, you don't have to ask your questions in chat. You can just jump on, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. And it's not going to, I'm not ever going to broadcast these publicly. This is no. members only. It's very ex exclusive. So um, it's going to be a lot more intimate setting, you know, and we'll see if Monica survives my secret <laughs> research area. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are there boulders? But, yeah. <laughs> But uh, Monica, appreciate you coming on. It, it was a, it was great meeting you, and uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to, to you know doing more with you and stuff like that. And and I definitely want to have you back. Definitely Thanks for having me. Yes. It was a lot. Yes, of fun. absolutely. Because we didn't we didn't even get to half of what oh, we man. wanted to talk about. But you know, I honestly think Tex and I already knew that. You know, you you have decades yeah. of experience, and uh, you know just we knew we weren't going to, we weren't going to even scratch the surface. We already knew that. So yeah, cause next time, next time we can get into skinwalkers. Yeah. 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 And talk a lot about that. Ah, see, there you go. Yeah. Y'all have a great night and we will see you and be safe. I'll see you tomorrow with Rob. And, uh, I think next week, I got to talk to Krista. Maybe we can get Brandy and Krista up here. And I, I, I want to, I know they, I know they have their show and y'all can go, go over to the Blondes and Booze and watch their show from last night because they go over everything that happened that weekend. But uh, yeah, I think next week the porch may be just me, her and Brandy, me, Kristen, Brandy. And yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 I like that. All right. We'll see y'all later. Y'all have a great night. And as soon Bye, as everybody. I can find the button, we'll get out of here.